This is Jeff Minter here with a hybrid vehicle training segment brought to you by P10 Magazine. During this hybrid vehicle training segment, we'll be taking a look at some of the things to consider when choosing a scan tool to use as part of your diagnostic process on a hybrid electric vehicle. So what are some of the key things that you need to consider when looking for a hybrid vehicle scan tool? Well, first one obviously is going to be vehicle compatibility. The next one's going to be scan tool platform of choice, which is in many cases a personal preference, but also has some functional aspects to it. And then also the data capabilities. In other words, can you get what you need to out of the car using the tool that you're looking at? Let's start with vehicle compatibility concerns. Obviously, if we're dealing with an OEM scan tool, we really don't have a vehicle compatibility concern, which is, again, one of the huge upsides to the OEM tools. That's because the tool is obviously designed to work on that particular vehicle. The downside, of course, is that it will not work on any other vehicles, except maybe as a generic OBD2 scan tool. And even that varies from vehicle to vehicle and scan tool to scan tool. The OEM tools generally will not be incompatible with the vehicle you're working on, unless, of course, you have one of the tools that is not based on a subscription basis and has outdated software. Then you would may, maybe possibly run into a compatibility issue, but again, that would just be a, a simple process of updating the scan tool to the current version. When we start looking at aftermarket scan tools, we bring in a lot of other variables. So the coverage on these from vehicle to vehicle varies widely between different scan tool manufacturers. Access to some of the modules isn't even possible on some of these scan tools, even though they may advertise that they do work on that particular vehicle's hybrid system. In other words, you go to get into the vehicle, you open up the control module list, and it just simply doesn't even list the control module that you're trying to access that's in that vehicle. Or it may potentially show the module, but just can't open it up to get any data out of it, including in some cases trouble codes. We've even seen some instances where we've had to in execute a clear code command more than once in order to get the code to clear out of some of these control modules. Then we run into a, another concern, which is data accuracy. If you have data that displays erroneous values, can you really trust any of the other data that you're getting out of that tool for that particular vehicle? So when we're looking at an aftermarket scan tool, you have to realize that there are some serious limitations when we go outside of the standard OBD2 data streams. One of the other things you can consider when you're looking at a scan tool purchase is the platform that you prefer. And again, much of this comes down to the, the individual preference versus the capabilities, but there are definitely some capability differences between these two formats. The two formats we're going to look at are, are what I'm referring to as handheld or PC-based. The handheld tool obviously is going to be a relatively compact unit compared to a, a PC-based for the most part. Now the upsides of the handhelds, or at least some of the larger upsides, are just simply that they're very convenient. You don't require anything other than the scan, the scan tool itself and possibly the adapter cables and, and maybe some personality keys depending on what manufacturer, what vintage of tool you're using. And they are generally going to be vehicle powered, which means you don't need any sort of an external power source and you don't have to worry about that scan tool running out of power while you're on a test drive and shutting down. The downside to these generally comes in the screen size format. That is improving vastly in the last several years as we've seen things move to the, the tablet-based aftermarket handheld scan tools. We've seen many of them go wireless, so you no longer have the, the wires in the way while you're driving. Those kind of things have definitely made large improvements. The screen size limitations can also be offset in some cases if these tools do have an external monitor hookup. Now obviously then that ties you to the, the monitor and a power supply for that monitor. So during a test drive, that obviously isn't practical, but again, with some of the, the new tablet-based ones, this is really becoming somewhat of a, a non-issue anymore. The last con that I listed on here is the processor capability, and again, this is improving as well. In the past, many of these handheld tools had a very limited processor, which means the rate of data processing was very, very low. So you could not get the speed of the data out of this, and you could not get necessarily the recording capability out of this that you could out of something like a PC-based tool. Although the, the line between the handhelds and the PC-based tools is definitely starting to, to dull down significantly. We're seeing a very, very merged approach to these in many cases now, where the handhelds are virtually becoming PCs, and the PCs are shrinking down to become a handheld. Now, if we looked at the traditional PC base, this would be something like a, a laptop-based scan tool versus the, the handheld tablets. Uh, 
the big upside to these was that the screen size was generally larger. Now with some of the OEM scan tools that are laptop based with the, the Panasonic Toughbooks, those screens were not really large. But if you're dealing with an aftermarket interface for the, the PC, whether it be something like the Toyota TechStream Lite, which is the factory diagnostic software running through the, the aftermarket interface option, you could do as large of a laptop screen as you wanted on that. So you could get a, a much better view of graphs more data on the screen without having it be extremely small font, those kind of things. The other thing is that we have processor capabilities now that we never saw before in the traditional handheld units because the laptop processor has much more speed capability than what that vehicle is putting out on the data bus that the scan tool can access, which means we don't have to worry about the scan tool now being the, the slowdown portion of that data stream because the scan tool, being the, the computer, has more than enough capability to process all of the data coming out of it. The downside to a laptop based really is that they're more cumbersome. They're a larger unit to handle. You have to go through boot up the computer and then open the software up in order to access it. So it, in some cases it takes a little bit longer to get that software launched than it does to simply plug in the handheld tool and instantly start scanning the vehicle. The other big downside is that it requires an external power source. If your laptop battery is almost dead, you're going to have to either have some sort of an inverter or a cigarette lighter adapter for your laptop, or you run the risk of having your scan tool shut down while you're diagnosing that vehicle if you say you're on an extended test drive. So obviously that would be an issue if you're in the middle of capturing data and all of a sudden your computer shuts down and you lose full communication with that vehicle. Next, let's take a look at the data capabilities or the data capability limitations of various scan tools that we need to take into consideration while we're looking at their application in a hybrid vehicle diagnostics. First one is going to be speed. We need something that can keep up with the sampling rate that that vehicle is capable of putting out. Now again, if we go with a, a good quality aftermarket tool, that shouldn't be an issue. If you go with the OEM tool, that's definitely not going to be an issue. The storage capability can vary widely based on the tool choice that you have though. Some can only capture a very, very small snapshot of data, where others can record for hours and hours and hours. Now, depending on the type of problem you're trying to capture, if you're dealing with something that only acts up every now and then while you're on an extended test drive, and you want to be able to record the entire test drive, then you also have to have a way to trigger that event so that you know where the problem occurred. So all of that becomes something that, that varies from one scan tool to the next as far as how much data you can record for any given flight data recording session, and also how you can trigger the session so that you know where the problem occurred, or how you can flag that section at least, so you know where the part of that large data file that you recorded is that you really need to review, so that you can look at the before and after that occurrence segment without having to page through, say, a half hour test drive worth of data and try to figure out where exactly the problem popped up. The other thing then is the display of that data and how it can be displayed by the, the particular scan tool. In particular, the graphing capabilities. The graphing capabilities of many of these scan tools are very, very limited. And this is true for some of the older handheld OEM tools as well as for many of the aftermarkets. They just simply did not have that good of graphing capabilities. And in some cases, it was limited simply by the fact that the old handhelds did not have a very high resolution screen. And in some cases, it's limited by the number of colors that can be displayed by those screens because if you put more than one data pit on one graph and you don't have the capability of drawing in color or drawing in, in numerous different colors, then it's going to be nearly impossible to differentiate those data pit lines from each other as they're all being graphed on top of each other. So you need to look at things like how many data pits can be graphed at the same time. And a big one, can they be overlaid? Because many of the aftermarket scan tools we found cannot overlay their graph on top of each other, and even those that can in many cases are limited to four data pits. Now that might not seem like a big limitation, but as we start to look at some of these systems on the hybrid vehicles, you may find that there are significant numbers of data pits that you would like to overlay so that you could compare them exactly to each other in a graphical format. And we'll take a look at one of those examples here in just a little bit. Before we take a look at our scan tool graphing sample or example that we're going to, to show you, let's take a quick second to review some of these concerns that we have with the aftermarket scan tools in particular related to the hybrid vehicles and how the hybrid vehicle system actually complicates the use of a aftermarket scan tool. First one is they just have limited coverage of the hybrid control modules. Unfortunately, even though they may advertise that they have support for a 2001 to 2003 Toyota Prius, 
what we've found is that doesn't always necessarily add up to 100% support for that vehicle. In many cases, they seem to have support, but when you actually dig into the, the module, you can't necessarily access everything, or in some cases, you can't access anything, even though it was advertised to have Toyota hybrid support. We found that while they may have Toyota hybrid support for some of the years and some of the models, it doesn't necessarily have support for all of those makes and or all of those models and years for that particular car line, even though they advertise it as, as one lump sum. The other thing is that we end up with some inaccuracies and erroneous data displayed. Unfortunately, rather than just not displaying anything, what we're seeing on some of these scan tools is they're actually processing the data PIDs incorrectly. So they will still display a value, it just won't be the correct value, which obviously can be a huge concern if it produces a value that may be close enough to look realistic, but not within the normal parameters, because then you could actually be chasing a problem that doesn't exist. Now obviously if it shows something like a 500 degree temp sensor on an ambient temp sensor, but it's not displaying an error code, then we know that's an erroneous data value because it's well outside of the normal parameter capabilities of that particular sensor and it hasn't flagged a code so we know that's not realistic. However, if it was displaying something much closer to a, a potential realistic value, we would have some different concerns. Next one is the trouble code display. Some of the manufacturers are starting to put subcodes in where it'll actually break down the, the four digit code into a sp smaller section of codes because they're running out of code numbering capabilities because there are so many different failure potentials on the vehicles. That's obviously not unique to hybrids, but when you add the hybrid drive system in, it adds that many more different codes that need to be triggered. So what we're seeing is not only will there be, say, a P code with a four-digit number behind it, but then there will be a three-digit three digit subcode or even a four-digit subcode that needs to be displayed. Now, many of the aftermarket scan tools were never equipped to be able to display those, so what we're finding is some can't access them at all and others are simply storing them in the freeze frame data, which means you can access it, but you have to know where to look for it, and you have to know that you need to look for it. If you don't know that you need to look for that and you clear the code and it's gone, when you do go to try to find it, now obviously your freeze frame data where that may have been stored is cleared out as well, and you can't access it. And because that four digit code may have 30 pages worth of diagnostic information in it, broken down by these subcodes, if you don't know that code's there and you don't record it or you don't have access to it, then you really can't diagnose that vehicle effectively. And the last one is the one that we're going to take a look at an example on, and that's the graphing limitations. There's just simply more data PIDs available now because we have more systems on the car. And in some cases, we're going to have numerous data PIDs that should have virtually the same exact value on them all the time that we may want to be able to compare all at once, or at least numerous ones of those data PIDs at once, so that we can see if any of them are skewing from the average. And that's what we're going to take a look at right now so you can get an idea why graphing can be such an important thing. Now when we look at this graph here, you'll notice that there are numerous data PIDs all graphed together, and most of them are very, very close to each other. That's because these are all what are called V-blocks on the high voltage battery. All of these should be virtually identical, so to have a scan tool that can graph numerous different parameters all at the same time and overlay them allows you to watch these during a quick test drive to see if you have any that skew from the average. Now obviously in this case we can see that we have about three of them that are dropping below the other five that are on the screen when we accelerate, and then when we hit the brakes they pop back up above those. Now that indicates a potential problem with the battery. The concern with this is, even with this factory scan tool, we can only see eight of the data parameters at once on this graph. Now in this case, this car has 14 different V-blocks that we would like to monitor all at once. And given the limitations of the factory scan tool, we can only see eight of them at a time. Which means if we wanted to see all 14 of those, we would have to do it in two different sections, or we'd have to do a flight recording and then come back and do two separate reviews. And if you're going to do two separate reviews, you're going to have to carry at least one data PID from the first review into the second review as your, your standard to compare those other data PIDs to. Ideally, it would be nice to be able to see all of these data parameters on the screen at once so that we can monitor them visually to see any potential dropouts or anything that's going higher than the average without having to go back and do numerous flight recording reviews just from a, a time standpoint. The downside is on some of these vehicles, we may have 20 of these data parameters, or maybe even more than that, if they're available on the data stream. Most scan tools that we found in the aftermarket are only capable of four graphs at once, 
and many of those can't even overlay those graphs, which means if you're going to try to review these, you're going to have to look at the raw data numbers to see if we have one dropping compared to the others, because it's obviously not going to be necessarily a gross difference. If you notice in these, we're not dealing with a huge voltage difference. We're only dealing with something that would be probably around a volt difference from the high to the low. Now, in this graph, it's very, very prominent because they're laid right on top of each other. However, if these were stacked on top of each other with four individual graphs, or in this case, eight individual graphs, by the time you scale those down to the screen and how small that would be, that one volt difference is going to be a minute difference in the change of the height of that graph, simply because of the limitations of how much data is going to be squeezed into that screen. So it's going to be very difficult to tell when they're not laid on top of each other that you have one or more that are out of the average. So what does all this mean when looking at a scan tool for hybrid vehicle diagnostics? Well, the bottom line is the OEM scan tool is still the preferred tool to use on these vehicles. And unfortunately, that's just the reality currently. Now, the good news is, is it's not a hard set rule. That's just the preferred method. Obviously, you can still use aftermarket scan tools, and the aftermarket scan tools are getting much, much better every year at dealing with these vehicles as these vehicles become more common. But currently, that is still the only safe route to go where you know you'll have 100% data that is accurate and that you have access to everything on the vehicle. Now, if you are going to look at an aftermarket scan tool, there are a couple different things that you need to consider so that you can really make a good decision. The first one is you have to know which vehicles you're going to work on most. Because if you know which vehicles you're going to work on most, you can then get that scan tool or get a variety of different aftermarket scan tools as demo units if possible and try those on the vehicles that you work on most commonly and ideally have the capability of comparing that to what the OEM tool can do and what it can access. That allows you to self-validate to make sure that the tool can actually access the vehicles you're most likely to work on and produce good quality data for you. Now obviously that's time consuming, but it does give you the ability then to use that aftermarket scan tool with confidence on the hybrid vehicle. Now, the other thing is to make sure that the scan tool you're choosing has the graphing capability based on what you decide that you're going to use it for, or what you anticipate that you're going to use it for. If you have no intention of looking at data PIDs like the example that we just showed, then you don't need to worry about the graphing capabilities that we're looking at on that Toyota Techstream light system. However, if you know that you want to be able to compare the battery V blocks or various other sensors overlaid on one individual graph, then you need to make sure that you get a scan tool capable of doing it. And in many cases, what we found is that means you actually have to get the scan tool in your hand because they may not necessarily fully explain the graphing capabilities. They may list how many different graphs they can display, but they won't talk necessarily about how many can be merged or how big the display can be for each individual one. So as you start to look at these different tool options, again, the big thing if you're dealing with aftermarket, make sure you try to get your hands on that tool before you invest the money in it get it hooked up to the cars you're most likely to work on and see what kind of access you can really get because the manufacturers unfortunately don't necessarily have a full listing of every vehicle that they're capable of working on that is 100% accurate when we deal with the hybrid drive system modules. Thank you for watching this technical training segment brought to you by P10 Magazine. Hopefully you found it a benefit and will join us for another one in the future.